For quite a few years now, I've been rocking some sort of Pascal GPU. From a GTX 1050 Ti to a 1080, 1080 Ti for a couple of days, and then now a Titan XPP. And I only upgraded to the Titan XPP from the 1080 Ti for just the extra gig of VRAM. I've personally been extremely satisfied with the overall performance I've gotten so far with this GPU. After I got my RX 6600 for a recent video, I found out, nowadays, you can actually get a pretty solid GPU for under $200. And you can get one that is a much newer GPU with nearly half of the power draw that supports ray tracing. To me, that just seems like an amazing deal. But tons of people are still buying Pascal cards for a lot of money. So why are people still buying 1080 Ti's and Titan XP's for, well, kind of crazy prices for seven-year-old GPUs. I mean, man, I remember when I got my Fury X for $150 back in 2018. What the hell happened to GPU prices? I guess let's just start out with the specs here. Titan XPP released in April of 2017 and was absolutely insane. It was one of the fastest GPUs in the world at the time, with a clock speed of 1405 megahertz and a memory speed of 1426, along with 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory, and it would draw 250 watts of power with an 8-pin and 6-pin connector, which honestly, today, that doesn't even sound that crazy. Does use PCIe Express Gen 3, though, and has one HDMI 2.0 port and three Display Port 1.4 ports. That's a lot of ports. And has a total of zero tensor slash ray tracing cores, whatever you want to call them. Yep, zero. This thing's basically just unusable. Oh, and it had a $1,200 <laughs> MSRP. NVIDIA really has been creeping their prices up for a while. I mean, starting with the Titan series, I guess. But even a 4090 costs more than a Titan used to be. Not even a 4090 Ti, a 4090. What the hell? So the RX 6600 that was released in 2021 and was released on what as a mid-tier budget-ish card meant to do the best it could with what it had. I feel you, buddy. It has a single HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 1.4 ports, along with a clock speed of 1626 megahertz, and it actually can boost to 2491 megahertz with memory running at 1750 megahertz, along with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. It draws a max of 132 watts through one eight-pin power connector and has 28 ray tracing cores. Don't know if that's enough, but whatever. The RX 6600 also had an MSRP of 330 US dollars, quite a lot less than the $1,200 MSRP of the XPP. Nowadays though, the 6600 sells in the high hundreds, low 200 range where I am, and a brand new one can be bought from XFS, XFS Jesus. for $210 right now, actually on sale and 280 normally. The Titan XPP obviously cannot be bought anymore with a warranty, brand new, but it can be bought used typically in the low to mid $200 range, with a $50 aftermarket warranty that probably won't cover anything. Just be careful not to buy the wrong Titan X because there are three of them, seriously. And two of them are Pascal cards, so. And if you wanna pick up one of these cards yourself for whatever reason, make sure you check out my affiliate links. Money. So all of that technical garbage really only tells me that the Titan XPP has four more gigabytes of VRAM, no ray tracing, which is something I never use, and draws about 100 extra watts of power. So why is it commanding a nearly 40% price premium for such an old GPU? I guess we should find out. So I threw together a test system with a Ryzen 3600X, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4, and some cheap ASRock motherboard I already had for a previous video, which you can check out if you want. I mean, it's budget GPUs. What do you want, a 13900K and 64 gigabytes of DDR5? I mean, that's what you get. So it's time for testing. Since I'm purely testing the GPUs, this will probably go a little bit faster than my normal testing. So let's start out with the PP my favorite. I finally got Red Dead Redemption 2 to work, and I got it running at 1080p high-ish settings. I just clicked right until the quality thing pops up right here, so yeah. In the intro area, I was getting pretty consistently in the high 60, low 70 FPS range with the dips into the low 60s, high 50s. I actually did get lower frame rates in the benchmark, but for some reason didn't record that two times in a row, so you get what you get. Doomer Eternal 1080p high settings was in the low to mid 200s with some drops to the high hundreds and sometimes dipping in the 300s. Pretty wide frame rate variants, but there were no major drops or stutters. It was pretty playable. Halo Infinity and Beyond 1080p high settings got a stable 120 FPS with a few drops into the 110s. Overall, pretty stable experience, and if you drop down to medium settings, you can get a smooth 144 hertz experience. Metro Exodus high settings in the desert was a solid 90 to 110 FPS. No major drops or anything. I actually played through the entirety of this game on my XPP very good experience. I also wanted to test something a little bit different to see how these slightly less than high-end GPUs would fare. So I played a Valorant quick play. I did high settings and got 
got a pretty consistent high 200 to low 300 FPS. And I also play this on my 4K monitor with my main PC and still get pretty similar results with the XPP and a Ryzen 3700X. So I really don't think we're GPU bound. Blender BMW finished in just 40 seconds typical BMW driver behavior, and my 5D Classic review exported in about 15 minutes at 4K in Premiere Pro 2023, which is pretty solid. I should also say that when editing proper video, my VRAM usage is almost always between 10 to 11 gigabytes whenever I'm kind of later in a video getting close to being done and will pretty often top out really close to 12 gigabytes. And now the RX 6600 non-XT. Starting out again with RD2, same settings, I was able to get a steady 50 to 60 FPS, a tiny dip from the XPP, but not too big of a deal. You could easily adjust the settings to kind of make this run around 60 FPS and you probably wouldn't even notice. <laughs> and again, no stuttering or anything, very solid performance. Doomer was in the high 100 to low 200 range with weirdly less frame rate variation than the XPP. I don't really know why, maybe it was just due to driver differences, I'm not sure. Infinity and Into the Ground was running at 90 to 100 FPS and was a very stable experience, again within spitting distance of the XPP, at least to me. Exodus was in the 70 to 9 FPS range in the same area, very playable, obviously I did not turn on RTX though for this. And Valorant was about the same, high 200 to low 300 FPS, very playable, still just as bad as I always was at this hate this game. So actually in terms of gaming, the results are pretty similar. For almost half the amount of power draw, which unless your power is free, is going to make the RX 6600 much cheaper over time anyways, especially if the XPP draws enough power to make you have to upgrade your power supply, then it'll be even bigger of a gap in terms of the price. And speaking of gap, the gap for me to hit 10,000 subscribers is like 50 right now. And if I'm already at 10,000, then uh, screw it, 15. <laughs> YouTube goals. But while there is like a 10 to 20% performance jump depending on the game, I did not mention RTX, which if you're not me, you probably actually want in your games. I mean, I don't really care for it, but whatever, it's missing on the XPP. And if you're gaming at 4K with only a budget GPU, FSR is going to help you a ton with performance. So I went ahead and did a little bit of 4K testing. So in 4K, I just tested Red Dead Redemption 2 because I was sick that day and I only have so much time please. The XPP in Red Dead Redemption 2 was actually struggling to maintain more than 30 to 40 FPS with the same settings as before in 4K. I was honestly pretty shocked I was even able to do that well, though. I was expecting much, much worse performance. Still playable, but I would want to change settings so it's not running at 30 FPS. Also, Red Dead Redemption 2 looks damn good in 4K. Wow. The 6600, on the other hand, supports FSR which essentially upscales games to get you higher frame rates at higher resolutions. Now I know it's not quite that simple, there's more to it, but this is not Gamer's Nexus, and I don't have the budget for a lab. Now, this is probably not news to most of you, but I mean, I'm still running Pascal, all right? With this off, Red Dead Redemption 2 gets pretty similar performance to the XPP, but when I turn it on in performance mode, which looked pretty similar to the balance mode to me, so I just went with it, I'm able to get a stable 45 to 50 FPS, and yeah, there's some artifacting, especially in this weird little mountain thing right here, but this still looks better, to my eyes at least, than 1080p at the end of the day, and makes 4K not only playable, but playable at really respectable settings on a newer game with a budget GPU. So, I mean, for gaming at least, I'm gonna call that a win for the 6600. Obviously, elephant in the room, not every game supports FSR, and not all of them support it the same. Typically, older games don't support it, and older games, you don't really need the newest, bestest ever GPU. I'm so I'm still gonna call that a win. All right, but let's check out the synthetic benchmark. See how it holds up there. Blender BMW on the RX 6600 took significantly longer at three minutes and 31 seconds. I'm really not sure why it took so much longer. Maybe Blender just really likes CUDA and doesn't like OpenCL. I don't know, but I did make sure it was set to use the GPU. So I don't know. I guess Blender just doesn't like AMD too much. Then my 5D classic review seriously surprised me. It finished exporting in just under 11 minutes, nearly four minutes quicker than the Titan. I was really expecting the lack of VRAM to give me major issues, especially because it actually did give me issues when I was reviewing the ThinkPad P51. But I did remove all of the animation from the 5D classic timeline. That may have helped with the VRAM limitations. I have noticed those take a lot of that. Like I said, I did have issues in the past where Premiere would just crash exporting videos due to the lack of VRAM. And for my use case, the 11GB and the 1080Ti was just 
barely not enough. But the XPP was able to do it with that extra in, I mean, gig of RAM. For 99% of people though, editing in 1080p timelines, maybe 1080p 60 FPS, the 6600 should be perfectly fine and give you no real issues. But if you're a very certain type of person, maybe the XPP could be good. If you're that very certain type of person and you're willing to spend more money, my question would be, why not get a cheap Quadro or spring for an RTX 2080 Ti to get the VRAM and a pretty big performance boost? I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Really, I'm not quite sure why anyone is still buying Titans in general, especially Titan XPs or even 1080 Ti's now. Unless you have a really very, very specific use case and don't pay for your own power bill, a slightly more modern card just seems like the way to go. If you already have a nice big XPP though, I'm struggling to see a reason to upgrade. I mean, mine still gives me no issues at all, and I really can't find a game that pushes it to its limits at 1080p medium settings. If you have a good reason for people to still buy a Pascal card, please, let me know in the comments. I really am genuinely curious. And if you're interested in something else that people spend way too much money on, check out my video on the AMD FX series in 2023. Really interesting chips, really bad price.